Howdy, it is I, Junk, back again so soon, and I have heard your voices that you would prefer some more commentary type videos, so I'll keep doing some more of those. Uh, thank you for the comments. Thank you for finding me on the War Robots Discord and, and suggesting uh, having that conversation about it. I will do what I can to accommodate. Obviously, I've got a day job, which is, you know, this hangar doesn't fill itself. This isn't, this isn't gifts from Pixonic. This is uh, cold hard American currency changing hands for really stupid robots. So, within that constraint, I'll do what I can to uh, offer some more commentary type videos. This is one of those. You've actually found yourself in the middle of the thing we're discussing. It's like when they say the name of the movie in the movie, you're already here. You're wearing the t-shirt of the band you've come to see. So, congratulations. <laughs> you've already accomplished one goal today. Check that off your to-do list. And the game I've got, it is a Shenzhen game where you get to see a very meta hanger. Not mine, uh, although mine is... I th like, mine is meta, but you're going to see. There's more meta than this. And yet another illustration of why you don't try to hold y the enemy's home beacon. Always happy to show people why that's a bad strategy, because people still love it. Uh, I've had a chance to play Rook a bit more. And I think I've figured out one of the basic counterplay strategies of Rook. One of the important things to know is that Rook seems to really shine. This could be partially because of the weapons, but I think it's mostly an effect of the of the castling mechanic. Rook seems to really shine going after an enemy that's in the air, but that's going to have to drop. So I'm thinking Miramets, I'm thinking I'm thinking Ether, not so much other Rooks because they're going to drop somewhere far away and you might not predict that correctly. But even even Seraphs to a point towards the end of their flight because the real vulnerable time there is to unload during the descent. You can do so much damage with these bubble shotguns on the descent. So not a, not a great insight. I'm still learning the rope, still getting my head around it. But I think that's the, the easiest thing so far that I found to look for is if you see something where it's going to descend and you can predict based on trajectory where it's going to land that's the target you want for a rook with the bubble shotguns. Probably a rook in general. So that you can suppress it when you actually do land, but you can do a lot of damage on the way down. So be looking for that, and especially on smaller maps where, even if they have lateral movement, there just isn't that far to go. You can do a lot of damage with, with your rook and take out threats very quickly. So yeah, not a lot to say other than that. Let's get into it. Okay, we're back in Shenzhen, and I am going to open here with the Nether. Not a characteristic robot of me to run in the first place, uh, let alone to open with, but on these smaller maps, you have to try some different things, and we'll talk about Behemoths a little bit later, because why would I not? That's my favorite. Uh, I'm <laughs> not getting a lot of static at first here on the right, but pretty soon I get Cruel Angler and Lynx, and the Cruel Angler there is Tony, and if you think you play meta hard, I assure you, you don't play meta as hard as Tony does, and you'll look at that <laughs> throughout the game. So I decide, yeah, that's not for me, and let's try my luck over here on the left. And I can see there's two robots, one of them coming towards me, don't know what it is at first. And there we have a harpy. Not an excellent matchup for me, for lots and lots of reasons. So I try a little bit discretion, the better part of Valor, wait for it to land again, and he correctly didn't didn't land where he, he didn't teleport back, he landed behind some cover. Wasn't enough to save him in this case, but he knew teleporting back was just going to put him right in my sights. And uh, Harpy's friend Siren shows up. Well, the Harpy got my last stand down, the Siren's got bendy bullets. This is an ugly, ugly matchup for me, and I'd rather not be here, but... Sometimes you go into battle with the robots you have, not the robots you wish you had, and Harpy gets the win. Second drop, and I figure I'll go for Team Captain, and I land right on top of a fight between me <laughs> and a cruel angler who I'm thinking is probably not Tony. Maybe it is, and I'm, mis I'm miscalculating. Doesn't seem like a Tony move. Oh, I'm wrong. There he is. That was an odd 
choice of fight because yes in this case he he got pretty close to taking me out even though he was very low but to fight where you don't know where someone's going to drop in is messy because even if you take somebody out or this early in the game they're going to drop another robot and in the rock paper scissors of robots if they get to drop on top of you knowing what you have you're likely to be at a, at a disadvantage uh, speaking of being at a, at a disadvantage Behemoth on small maps. I think the big thing here, there are some maps where it's always going to be tough, but the choice of when you go Behemoth and where you go Behemoth is the most important thing. And on every map, you can do constructive things with the Behemoth. Um, even a long-range setup Behemoth, there's always something constructive you can do. The hardest one is Moon. And on Moon, the most important advice I have for a Behemoth of any kind is don't drop it first. Because those claw, those claw weapons, those... Uh, Rust rockets will fire right over the edge of that first ridge. So here I lost a game of peekaboo with a rook. And I decide, well, I can play rook too. Let's both play rook. I don't know where Tony's rook went, but I've got my own uh, my own problems here to deal with. That ether was tied up taking out the Minos. So I have a chance to get a few shots on him, but... Not before another Titan spawns behind him. I think it was a, uh, a Miramis that spawns behind him. Tony's back there dancing. Tony's really been camping a lot today on the enemy home. So, camping's the wrong word. Setting up shop, enjoying the enemy home. <laughs> Which uh, surprises me somewhat. I think um, everybody knows my feelings about doing that. If you try to take enemy home and then you're not much, much stronger than the other team and hold it, you're gonna just mech. You're just wasting robots. So, that's my feeling. Rook manages to, di to uh, convince the Ao Ming to not hang out in the air, and then I'm just slowly marching towards Beacon B. I'm expecting someone will drop in, so I regenerate my shield, so I've got a nice set of new shields to fight with. If you haven't been following the, the Rook's ability, the Rook destroys its, its existing shields. It gets a heal based on the number of shields it's destroyed, and it teleports in new shields. So it's, uh, it's something you want to use between fights, ideally can use it during a fight if you think getting a heal is more important than whatever remaining shield you have left, but it's really meant for a between fight uh, shield renewal. And taking a big bite out of Minos before Luchador jumps over and takes another big bite. Whether you fire into the reflector of a Minos is, is a tough decision, because depending on the robot you have, if you're in another Titan, there are times where you're better off taking your reflected damage and taking him out than not reflecting damage, but him dumping his weapon into you. Boy, that sounded bad. Than him emptying his clip into you. Well, now Moist Critical's gonna get me. But then him unloading his mag into you? Whatever. You know what I'm saying, right? So here we are back on our own home where they've been holding it, and wouldn't you know... For some reason, it seems like they're running out of robots a little bit on the other team. Of course, our team is looking a little sketchy too right now, so I shouldn't go patting myself on the back just yet. Uh, this harpy is facing some, let's say, some strong opposition. Miramets and a Rook. And I got the kill on that one. Now going for the secondary beacon. I get two drops on me and Tony and another cruel angler. <laughs> I, I, like I said, you think you ride the meta, but, but you don't ride the meta, uh, compared to some people. So now, another peekaboo game, this time it's a Mirror Mets and a Cruel Angler. And just because there's a little cover from a Rook, this is a tough, tough fight for the Angler. I mean, there's a limit to what you can do in any robot. So I decide, you know, let's, let's play a little bit, take enemy home. Gives me a chance. There's nothing that seems more vulnerable. I don't know. This is my experience. Those bubble shotguns just seem to eat Kepri's. And I know that the Kepri's been nerfed a number of times, so maybe that's causing a misalignment of perception. I genuinely think, though, it's just that Kepri's are generally not set up with the same number of defensive options. Uh, in this case, he's got a beak, which saves him for a little bit. Beak is, beak is almost like the best counter to the bubble shotguns, because they do so much damage, you will always cross that that stealth threshold. But, I mean, other than that, those Kepri's don't have tons of options to get away. Oh, unfortunate uh, matchup for, for the Miramets there. 
It just... I'm going up and he's going down. And as you can see, it seems like the enemy team is sort of thoroughly met. Yeah, I want to be clear, that that wasn't me firing till the shields went down. That was my friend here. <laughs> or I guess one of my friends here. Yeah, time is going to expire very shortly, and I don't think uh, there's anything anybody could do here. So I feel for the for the red team guy who's still standing. It might be tough taking down three titans with a scorpion. That 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 might be a, a challenge. So not much he could have done. Get to the scoreboard now. All right, four point five, eight kills, six caps. Not my best performance, and there's and we're gonna take a look at the top hangers here because they both did an amazing job. Uh, Tony and can't touch me. So let's see what the two lead guys in this game were running here. Uh, can't touch me has a pretty diverse hanger, right? Two typhons though, I noticed. And then there's Tony's hanger, which. Yep. Yep. I didn't notice the crisis. Probably could have just been. It was a small map, so we didn't get to enjoy the crisis. But yeah, not my best game, personally, but I think overall good teamwork, and I think another illustration of the point I will never stop trying to pass along, that trying to hold enemy home is a way to mech, unless you're much, much, much stronger than the other team. It's, it's putting yourself at a gross disadvantage. To win, a, to win a game, you don't need to win that way. You could hold other beacons, where they're not able to drop on top of you, and choose what robots they drop to counterplay you. So, yeah, I hope uh, that was interesting slash enjoyable. Thanks for staying to the end. If you're a dog or cat at home alone while your parents are out, I'm sure you're a good puppy or kitty, and you're going to get a treat as soon as they get back, and I will talk to you again soon. Later.